Hello everyone, welcome to another Star Wars Old Republic video, and today we're talking about Uprisings, which is a new group content we're getting with Knights of the Eternal Throne. Now today there was a dev stream, so I'm, all this information is official and it's uh, coming from the devs themselves. And there is some new information and pretty important stuff, so here we go. The first thing is, this is accessible through the Galactic Command, that's the main way they want people accessing this. So when you open up your new Galactic Command interface, it's going to be right there at the center. You can go ahead and queue up, and it's going to act like basically act like a group finder. Now, unlike some of the flashpoints we have right now, there is no uh, solo mode. So basically, you don't solo any of these. This is pure group content. You have to play in a four-player uh, group. And there are three modes, however. There is something called Story Mode. Now, that's a little bit confusing because on one hand, you might think Story Mode would mean it's solo, but it's actually not. It just means it's normal four-player uh, you can basically have any roles. There's no real requirements. You could have four DPS, you know, four tanks or whatever, and complete the uh, complete the uprising. However, then there's uh, another mode called veteran mode. Now this is the harder one, and this one actually requires you to have the proper roles. So you need one tank, two DPS, and one healer. And it's going to be a little bit more challenging. They said uh, more mechanics associated with the bosses. There are going to be more people you have to fight. They're going to have more health, stuff like that. And then we're actually getting a third mode that's not going to be released when Kotet hits, but it's actually going to be released later. Now this is called master mode. And this is going to be extremely difficult. They made it seem like it's really for those expert players that have, you know, obviously they have to be coordinated, talking to one another on TeamSpeak or whatever, and it's going to be really, really challenging. However, they did mention that veteran mode is basically going to be one of the best ways to earn command experience points. So if you want to really earn that command experience, like they, they basically, you know, go buy crafted gear have your guilds group up and go complete some of these veteran mode stuff because that is going to be the best way to earn CXP. One quick note is you don't actually have to complete the story to access this either. Even though uh, Uprisings does have a link to the whole Knights of the Eternal Throne story, which is that you have your alliance and these are uprisings occurring against your alliance, and so you're kind of going there to quell them. They did mention that there are very, very little story links to this. So basically, you don't have to co complete Kotet. You, right when you hit level 70, you can start doing these uprisings through the Galactic Command. And uh, they did mention there's no cut, there's not many cutscenes or anything. Like right now, in Flashpoints, they're very story based, and so there's tons of cutscenes and uh, they were mentioning like one player might just be space barring through all the cutscenes while another person's actually watching them all and they can get quite annoying and stuff and so they did mention that this is purely meant to be action-packed you know tons of mobs killing them have really cool mechanics with the bosses stuff like that it's not meant to be the story driven thing and so that so they did mention that they're kind of stepping away from the story and doing more group content stuff which is what the community has been asking for so that's a good thing they also wanted to make some other clear distinctions from Flashpoints, right? The first dist distinction being Flashpoints are a lot more story-driven. This one is a lot more action-packed. Uh, the other kind of times of distinct types of distinctions is that... Um, there's going to be a lot more waves of enemies and much bigger bosses. And so they said each uprising you can expect 15 to 20 minutes of content, which isn't a lot. That is kind of normal for a flashpoint. However, with this stuff, obviously there's going to be less cutscenes, more fighting, more bosses, and also cooler gameplay mechanics that I'll actually be getting into later. To give you guys a little bit of a reference point when it comes to the story modes, a uh, veteran mode they said, think about hard mode Lost Island which was extremely difficult and master mode will be like nightmare difficulty. So that's basically how the difficulty you can expect and think about it, like nightmare difficulty with only a four player group, you're going to really need some good coordination and some major skill to get those done and you're going to be rewarded greatly. I mean the amount of CXP you're probably going to earn with that stuff is going to be insane. Probably some of the mount drops are going to be cool as well and so it's nice to see that these uprisings have you know those types of group content op types of features to them what you see playing in the background of this video is actual uprisings footage and it's kind of be kind of going to be on a loop intermixed with a few images and stuff but this is all actual official uprising stuff it's not just random gameplay or anything and this uprising is specifically taking place on hoth but as i mentioned in other videos where there's a lot of data mine information that did turn out to be for the most part correct which is you have these uprisings on tatooine port nowhere and all these other places and um, yeah, I've already gone to the fact that they're supposed to be action-packed. And although, um, on one hand, you might be thinking to yourself, and I certainly thought this, is what it, you know, is it just mob spawning? Like, is that all it is? I'm going here, I'm running through a ton of mobs. Like, that would be extremely, extremely boring. But just from what I see from this gameplay, it does look a little bit different. They designed it in a certain way that it doesn't just feel like you're killing tons of mobs, but it's actually like, you know, you're doing tons of stuff. And we'll get right into one of the coolest gameplay mechanics, which is these new power-ups that you can get. So similar to in PvP, you have the health 
buff or the damage buff. Those are like power ups. Uh, these power ups look kind of similar to that, and you see you'll see it in one of these videos where uh, Musko's character actually runs and grabs a power up. And what these are is basically you can get one to three power ups, which will basically make it easier to take care of these mobs. It'll help you a lot in a flashpoint, and there's probably going to be some really cool strategy associated with them, especially when it comes to veteran and master mode, where you're probably going to have to use these power ups in a very strategic and specific way in order to defeat a certain boss. And so the three power ups here we have firstly Tempest Rocket Launcher. This fires an unstable prototype missile that explodes on contact to unleash torrents of lightning in all directions. So obviously it's an AoE damaging ability. Enemies caught in the blaze are electrocuted and stunned for three seconds while continuing to sustain heavy damage. Additionally, the initial impact deals massive concussive damage, knocking enemies backward and down to the floor. So it's an AoE damage ability with some stun associated with it. The second power up is Thermal Devastator. This is the most powerful and feared explosive in the galaxy. The Thermal Devastator emits an incendiary concussive wave that sets enemies ablaze. While the initial impact sears foes in all consuming conflagration, the follow up wave of force launches them through the air with a bone shattering force. So this was actually something I talked about in a previous video where I was speculating on some of the gameplay mechanics. And this was data mined to be a new ability and I was like, oh this is probably associated with uprisings or necessarily the Eternal Tone chapter or something where you can basically have this to give you a little bit of an edge. And so it's nice to see this actually become included and I'm excited to see some of the other stuff that was also data mined get included maybe into the Knights of the Eternal Throne chapters. Finally the third power up is Combat Clarity. This is by far my favorite and it's probably going to be really fun to use. This is for a brief period of time you will be able to move faster and use your most powerful abilities with reckless abandon. What they mean by that is basically your, your, all your cooldowns get reset a lot of your abilities won't actually have a cooldown, so you can spam some hardcore abilities. You'll have unlimited resources, so you you know if you're an assassin or something, you won't you won't run out of your force. Or if you're juggernaut, you won't run out of rage. You can just continually spam your huge hitting abilities, and this is probably one of those things where. It really links to that whole action-packed thing. So let's say you're in a really tight boss fight, you have ton of, tons of mobs jumping on you, and you get one of these uh, power-ups, specifically like combat clarity, then you can just spam some of your hard-hitting stuff, and it's going to get really fun to just see you do massive damage, take out all these mobs, or take a boss down to really low health. So that's probably some of those gameplay mechanics that has me most excited for these uprisings. And, um, and that's one of those things I was talking about. Like, it's going to feel less like I'm just running through a bunch of trash mobs if I have these cool abilities that make it a little bit easier, that makes it more action-packed. But that doesn't mean I have absolutely no concern because, like as we saw with Knights of the Fallen Empire, as you were doing chapters, sure, the story cutscenes were a lot of fun, but as you're going from cutscene to cutscene, or object objective to objective, there's just tons of sky troopers spawning and it was just so, really, so completely boring to just do those chapters. I was playing through the Disavowed chapter the other day for the Dark vs. Light event, and I was bored out of my mind. It was just kill sky troopers here, kill sky troopers there, it was so utterly boring. And so hopefully uprisings don't turn out to be like that. That is one of my concerns, but at the end of the day, I've, got, I've just got to play them when it comes out and see how I feel. And hopefully, hopefully they made it really fun. Uh, some of these power-ups I was talking about, those are kind of indicating that, yeah, this is going to be different. This is going to be more fun, but we actually have to see how that plays out. And so that ends the video. This is the official information, the fi official reveal, you could say, of Uprisings. It looks a lot more promising, but as I mentioned, it or as, maybe I forgot to mention, it has to set a very big bar. I mean, because the community has been asking for group content for a very long time, and we didn't get, I mean, I don't personally do operations, but I knew a lot of people wanted operations, and it was basically told to them that they're working on it, but it's not going to come out with Kotet, which was a huge disappointment. And so Uprisings basically has to fill that hole, fill that void for these PVEers, these hardcore PVEers who want really challenging content so hopefully it will hold up to that but as i said earlier we just got to see how it plays out at the end of the day i hope you guys enjoyed the video i really hope you guys found it informative i'll see you in the next one